So Freewell are back creating for the Osmo Pockets, but uh, this time it's for the Pocket 2. Well, actually, it's for the Pocket 1 and Pocket 2 because it fits on both. But this is another anamorphic lens, but this time you can fit ND filters on this thing. And I'm very excited because this opens up a few capabilities for, I guess, the drone market as well. But uh, in this video, we're gonna be discussing this thing right here and a few of its minor drawbacks. All right, let's get into it. So the main things I want to actually discuss essentially is just the image quality this thing produces and probably why you might actually want to choose anamorphic lenses because uh, you know it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a particular look, it's a niche look. Uh, some people don't like the blue lens flares that comes out of this thing and uh, why wouldn't you just get a wide angle lens? They did actually produce a brand new wide angle lens as well. We're gonna be testing this as well. Uh, and then we're gonna be putting them side by side with the regular pocket two footage as well so we can see what the differences are. Now this lens does have some cons. Like I said, it isn't absolutely perfect, uh, but this is probably nitpicking and something you may not actually notice when you're actually using this in the field. So, uh, but you do need to be aware of it before you're actually using it with your pocket one and pocket two. Now I am all for free well and their products, I've you know worked with them many times before. All my ND filters are pretty much from Freewell uh, and I love what they do. They produce quality uh, products at a budget price. This product is another one of their great products. Yes, it is a little bit of a niche item, uh, but it does open up a little bit more for someone who wants to challenge their creativity and produce, I guess, something slightly different to the regular footage you can see now. Now, if you do get this lens, you just have to remember that what you see in the camera isn't exactly what you get in the final product. You will have to do some post-processing, uh, especially when it comes to the de-squeezing of the image in your editing software, but it is as simple as grabbing the top and just condensing it lower. Uh, in Premiere Pro, I just drop it down to about 87%, and this seems to look you know, quite correct, because uh, the de-squeeze factor is approximately 1.5 one five times D squeeze as opposed to your standard say 1.33 or two times anamorphic compression. Now if you do have any further issues with this uh, please let me know in the comments below and I can potentially help you out. So just before we continue please hit that like button that helps support my channel reaches a whole bunch more new people that would be absolutely amazing. Let's get back to the video. Now the first thing you may actually want to know is the color actually shifts. Now I did test this indoors in a controlled environment just so I could you know, make sure that this was as accurate as I could possibly be. And I did set the camera white balance to 5600 Kelvin, which matches my lights. And uh, everything else was complete manual, so nothing would change. Now the Pocket 2, I filmed first, and then I placed the filter straight on top, and then uh, you notice a little bit of color temperature change. It does look a little bit warmer. Um, if you do look at the first footage right here, and then you look at the anamorphic footage, you can notice on the vector scopes right here that uh, the greens and blues uh, have been shifted down, specifically in the highlights as well. Uh, this would obviously be due to the coating on the lens, um, but you know, it, all you need to do is adjust that in your white balance, or you could potentially do it in post. I would prefer to do it at the time, so just make sure you're, if you're outside, you just need to make it a little bit cooler as opposed to uh, this warmer tone that it produces. Now second is the distortion. Once I corrected the image uh, to its correct aspect ratio, I saw there was some pretty heavy barrel distortion. Now you would commonly get this out of wide angle lenses. Um, it, it wasn't really as wide as the wide angle lens, uh, but it is very similar barrel distortion as the wide angle lens. Now it is fixable in post, uh, depending on your software, uh, but it is another step that you will have to do but you probably won't notice it too much in the field. Now, the only time you would probably notice this is like if you're filming tall straight lines, like in buildings, or if you're close to brick walls or something like that, you will actually notice that barrel distortion. 
Now, thirdly, there was a slight loss in light. Now, it did seem to lose a little bit of light through the lens. I did have the EV set to zero um, when it came to just the regular Osmo Pocket footage. And then uh, when I put the uh, filter back on, it went to negative 0.3 EV. So it did lose a little bit of light uh, through this lens. So you just need to be aware of that. You may have to uh, tr try not to bump up the ISO, but you may have to increase your light uh, coming from your light source if you are outside that becomes a little bit more difficult. So it, you need to just be aware that it does sort of take away a little bit of light. Now lastly is a little bit nitpicking, but uh, these ND filters are absolutely finicky. They are so super small. You almost need tweezers to try and get them off. But the best way that I found is you literally put the filters on this rail and then bam. It's easy. Uh, you can put them back on and slide them off. That seems to be the best way. Put them on and flick it off. Put them on, slide. Uh, if you are grabbing the middle ones, that makes it a little bit more difficult, but you just pretty much use the filter itself to, I guess, grab it. It seems to be the easiest way. Uh, that's probably how they design that rail. Uh, it's also a good sort of rail to obviously keep them there, but uh, be sure you're gonna actually have to use the uh, lens cloth that comes with it because you're gonna get tons and tons of fingerprints on these all the time. Now they did actually perform yeah, pretty decent image quality in the center, but you did lose a little bit of image quality out on the edges. It does start to soften out, especially when you did compare it to the regular Pocket 2 footage to the anamorphic footage. You can see the words on the down bottom right hand side it is a little bit sort of mushy, so you do lose a little bit of image quality. Now onto the wide angle lens. This is pretty short and sweet because it's pretty basic. Optically, it's pretty similar to the anamorphic lens, sharpness loss on the edges, uh, barrel distortion as well, just a little bit more than the anamorphic because it is a wider field of view. Uh, the lens is nice and sharp in the middle, which is great, but there is no color shift, which is really cool. Now, frankly, I... <sighs> In my opinion, it is pretty excessive barrel distortion. It's verging on sort of GoPro-like sort of footage when back in the day when they didn't actually have that, uh, what do you call it? Normal fix, normal mode, linear, linear, linear. That's the one, <laughs> almost forgot. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like GoPro when they had the linear mode. Uh, but if you're wanting, you know, something, uh, super wide, something like that, a little bit more creative, you know, this lens would actually be a pretty good option. Now, when it comes to autofocus, they both seem to perform quite fine. It didn't seem like it uh, made the Pocket 2 perform any worse. Uh, so that is a plus because you do want your footage to be, you know, in focus, but you just got to make sure that you tap on the screen and make sure that your subject is in focus because uh, sometimes the Pocket 2 can be a little bit sort of hit and miss when it comes to the focus. It all depends, um, I guess, on your lighting situation because it is contrast detection. I think, yeah, there is phase detection as well, but uh, it is phase and contrast. So just make sure that, you know, your subject is well lit. You're going to have great focus. So anyway, that is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it, you know, useful or entertaining. If you did, hit that like button. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you already haven't. Check out my other Pocket 2 or Pocket 1 videos in the link in the description below or, you know, just right up here as well. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Let's get it.